Time now for the Friend Zone, an irregular but beloved segment where we invite one of our friends from here at Fox onto the show. Brian Kilmeade, one of our all time favorites, hosts Fox and Friends by day, early in the morning. By night, he's an expert on President Andrew Jackson. He's got a new book on Old Hickory. It's called Andrew Jackson and the Miracle of New Orleans. It's about the future president's massive triumph over the Brits in the War of 1812, often forgotten, but celebrated in this book. Brian Kilmeade joins us tonight. Thanks so much for having me on. We I'm love having you on. I can't believe you're still awake. On so, the gridiron. So I, I love the I, I, love I know. The I'm very impressed by it. So this book has modern resonance in part because our current president has invoked Andrew Jackson so often. Do you see any similarities? Oh, yeah. I mean, I took the same tour the president took with the same person the president went with. And, you know, Andrew Jackson, uh, for one thing, was not liked by the establishment, the Virginia, Massachusetts establishment. Yeah. Andrew Jackson wasn't taken seriously when he ran. Andrew Jackson wasn't respected by his predecessors. Andrew Jackson liked to surround himself with his own family once in the White House yes. in particular. And Andrew Jackson, most of all, has the same style. You Unique hair. Well, and he also, I think he literally shot a man on Fifth Avenue or in Nashville or something. <laughs> he did, did he write into an argument? Shot, shot yeah. Well, how yeah. else would you settle your scores? And that's what brings me to this. See, Andrew Jackson was told as he was an orphan at 13. And to me, what I loved about this story, and I got into it even more than I thought I would, is because we are under the belief in America, and I know you believe this in all seriousness and all through our sarcasm, that it doesn't matter where you start in America, you have the opportunity to be successful, an opportunity to pursue happiness. He's at 13 years old, fighting in a war, loses his two old of brothers. His dad died before he was born, and his mom goes to earn some money. He finds out his mom's dead because her stuff arrives in the house in a trunk. The guy never had a present, celebrated Christmas or a birthday. He was literally raised by his town. He was determined to matter, not to be a criminal, not to use it as an excuse. And he works his way up, becomes a lawyer, a congressman, a senator, a judge, an attorney general, a militia, uh, a militia general, wins the biggest battle maybe in American history, and then becomes a two-term president. That is an American story. And that it goes to show you whatever it takes, you can be successful, even back then before Twitter. He was a tough man. I mean, they called him an old hickory for a reason. So quickly, the Battle of New Orleans, right. you're describing as the most important battle. You know, they burned Washington to the yes, ground. You know, the White House, it still exists. There's some burn marks in the uh, in the archways there. They still have it. Uh, Tony Blair later apologized. I don't accept it. <laughs> so we lose that battle. We lose every other battle. Every city is terrorized, except Alexandria, who said, how much would it cost for you not to burn our city? And they wrote the check. So fantastic. So they get around, and all our generals are either underqualified or just shot because they're around since the revolution. We have not really had a standing army and militia. Retrospect, don't start, a war, don't start a war with somebody, declare war on somebody if you are outnumbered three to one and the, uh, the army you're about to fight just beat Napoleon. Okay? Note to self. However, Major General Andrew Jackson wants revenge because he hates the British. They wiped out his family. He also bleeds red, white, and blue. He gets his militia of 1,400, and everywhere he goes, whether it's the Creek Indians or whether it's uh, the Spanish in Florida or whether it's the British down south, he takes them on and wins. But he knows the ultimate destination is to stop the Mississippi, get the Mississippi, and stop America from growing. They feared what we have, we have become, which are, is a superpower, an economic marvel, a democracy who rotates people and votes and gives people voice. If you're in the king and queen business, it's not great to see a democracy take root, right? Because <laughs> no, it's, it's oh, yeah, you don't usually win votes if you're a king. Elect me, I'll stay for a lifetime, even if I'm 12. Lovely system. So outnumbered two to one, outgunned with an army put together in three weeks, we defeat the army, Wellington's Invincibles, that defeated Napoleon. We beat him in 45 minutes. And it's because of the leadership of Major General Andrew Jackson and the fearlessness of a truly American army put together with free people of color, Indians and pirates. You should be proud to be an American. There, this is your third book. They've sold huge numbers, and there's a reason why you just saw it. Brian Kilmeade, thank you. Thanks so much. Congratulations. Thank you. And to you.